Turn with me to Genesis 26, and I'm going to read to you out of verse 18 through 22. Continue this conversation we've been having about our road to Rehoboth, or the big thing God has for us. Uh, if you didn't get a message outline when you walked in, our ushers are prepared to hand you one of those. Uh, they're the points of my message, as well as the verses we'll be reading with you. And you can take some notes there to reflect on in your devotional time this week on the Sunday message. Genesis 26, verse 18 through 22. I'm reading the New King James Version. If you're there, say, I'm there. All right. The Bible reads like this, verse 18. It says, And Isaac dug again the, wa the wells of water which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father. For the Philistines had stopped them up after the death of Abraham. He called them by the names which his father had called them. And also Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found a well of running water. Someone say running water. And it says, But the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen, saying, This water is ours. So we called the name of that well Esau. Someone say Esau. He says, Because they quarreled with him there. Then they dug another well, and they quarreled over that one as well. So he called that one Sitna. Someone say Sitna. And he says, and he moved from there, and he dug another well. So we're like, man, I'm getting tired just reading this verse. <laughs> he dug another well. And they did not quarrel over that one, though. And so he called its name Rehoboth. Say that with me. Rehoboth, which literally means open space. Big thing. Because he said, for now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful, prosperous, flourish in the land. I want to continue this message we've been talking about of our road to Rehoboth and how our time is now. Let's pray. Father, I pray right now for our church. We've prayed all throughout the service, and truth be told, we can never pray enough. And God, I just now pray, as your word says, that your house would be called a house of prayer. We now say, God, speak to us. As we set our attention and our meditation on you, the Bible says that as we do that, we will prosper in all things. And God, I now worship you with my attention. I pray that you would speak to us, enlarge us. In Jesus' name we pray, the church says, amen. Go ahead and give God a hand clap. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, our time is now. And you may be seated. Tell them, our time is now. It is our time. In Espanol, nuestro tiempo es ahorita. <laughs> Our time is now. Well, hey, let me give uh, just a quick 60-second recap of where we were last Sunday. Give us a little bit of a runway, and then we'll jump right into today's teaching. But I talked to you last week. We started this conversation, or actually this last month in January. We've been talking this prophetic word of our time is now, of how God is going to do things in our lives, and we, we want to see those things manifest now. We don't want to say one day or the some days or I hope so, but God, we want to see those manifest, manifest in our lives. It's not a demand. We're not saying, God, give it to me now, but we're saying, God, we, are, we want to see that come out of my life. I don't want to wait till later in life to see the goodness of God. I want to see the goodness of God today and in my now and in my present. Somebody say amen if you agree with me. And I told you last week how following God is a journey, not always a destination. And how when we begin to walk with God in order to see this big thing come out of our life or to see this Rehoboth come out of our life, that it's a journey. That oftentimes we're always, we're, we can become very asphyxiated with the destination, but the journey is what really teaches us. If we're all honest, it wasn't the goal that taught you, but it was the journey to the goal that taught you. It really taught you how to trust God. It really helped you develop in certain disciplines in your life. And I read the scriptures, and God is often more into the journey than he is to the destination. Now, let me qualify my statements. I'm not saying you shouldn't have goals. Have goals. I'm a very goal-oriented person. But if we're so focused on the goal, and then we lose what God is showing us in the journey, we tend to think, well, I haven't got to the goal yet, so I haven't learned anything yet. But the truth is God is actually developing us during the journey before we even get to the goal or the destination. And I told you how road trips can sometimes be fun or, 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 or tough. And my wife and I, we... Uh, you know, we used to love road trips until we had kids. And then, um, you know, we still love them, but they're a little more difficult. Hallelujah. They require more prayer and fasting. But, uh, you know, road trips can quickly turn into just a, a throw-up fest. Ah, you know, it can turn into a fighting fest. And my, this, my, my son's bugging my daughter. My daughter's bugging my son. And, and we haven't even left the driveway yet. And they can be really difficult, you know. But, but, you know, road trips, whatever it is, oftentimes it's difficult to get to a place because we're, it's difficult to go through the trip. 
And I told you how oftentimes in life God wants to take us to a place, but the trip or the difficulty of the trip hinders people from arriving. And, and, and this year, I believe God wants us to arrive to a certain place, but we've got to be willing to take the journey. We can't let the trip or don't trip on the trip so that you can get to the destination. Isaac was on a road to Rehoboth. Now, I love the story of Isaac. Give us some context. Isaac, the Bible says, gets to, to get before he got to his Rehoboth or the big thing. I love how the Bible is raw. And, and this is how you know the Bible is true because, because the Bible tells you the truth. You know, I mean, it tells you the truth. You want to know how you know uh, your uncle, un uncle Rico didn't write the Bible? Because if your Uncle Rico wrote the Bible, he wouldn't put things in there like, like forgive people that hurt you. Your Uncle Rico would be like, anybody mess with you, you mess with you. You know, he wouldn't put things in there like love your enemies, right? We, we know the Bible's true, but I love the Bible because the Bible says that Isaac, as he, before he got to his Rehoboth or his big thing, that first he got to Esau. Esau, in definition, was quarreling or arguing. And then he went to Sitna. And Sitna meant, meant enmity or, or it meant strife. And then before he went there, he finally got to his Rehoboth. In other words, Isaac first went through some stuff before he ever got to his Rehoboth. Now, the definition of Rehoboth, that may be a new word for many people, but that Rehoboth means big thing. Before Isaac ever got to his big thing, he had to go through some difficult things. Have you figured out yet in life that before you get to the big thing, you go, you go through some things? Let me put it like this. Is anybody married? <laughs> anybody got kids? <laughs> All right. Okay, you know what I'm talking about. Before I get to the thing or before I arrive to the place of blessing, I got to get through some stuff. Like you had to go through stuff to get here. <laughs> right? And we know that it's a process to get to the place that God wants us. It's the principle of arrival. Say this with me. Say the principle of arrival. The principle of arrival is this, is I must take the trip in order to arrive. Basic illustration. If I'm right here and I want to get there, what do I got to do? I got to walk and take the trip. But if I don't take the trip, then I'll never arrive. I know that's basic, but you'd be so surprised how many believers do this. God, I want to arrive there. Take me. God, my marriage needs to be there. Hurry up. God, my finances, God, it just, you can just name, we, we, her, let's go. And God's like, no, no, no. You understand how this works. The principle of arrival is Isaac, you're going to have to get through some Esau. You're going to have to get through some Sitna. And finally, you're going to get to your big thing because God is into the journey. Come on, somebody. He's into the journey before we get to the destination. Now, this is important because, see, this year, you may have to go through some stuff. But if I'm going to go through some stuff, then I want to go through the right stuff that's going to take me to my Rehoboth, not go through the wrong stuff so I can just be more messed up. Come on, somebody, say amen. And so as, as, as we begin to get to that place, we need to understand that this is a journey. Now, Isaac kept going. What kept Isaac going? What, what, kept, what kept Isaac motivated to even want to keep going? The Bible says, and, and just you can read the, the whole chapter. I've said it in weeks past. But the Bible says in Genesis 26 that Isaac wanted to go to Egypt. Egypt is a representation of our past. Isaac was like, I, I, want to, I just want to go back. I forget all this. You know what I mean? I just want to go the other way. But God spoke a word to Isaac. And God says, Isaac, I'm going to bless you. He said, Isaac, stay in the land. Isaac, I have a big thing for you right here. And that kept Isaac going. Do you want to know what's going to keep us going is when we get a word from heaven. When we get a word from heaven. Have you got a word from heaven yet this year in 2015? Has God given you a word that you say, no, God, you spoke this to me, and I know that this is coming. And even though I'm dealing with some Esau things, I'm dealing with some Sitna drama. God, you spoke to me, and I'm going I'm to let this word take me to that destination. Some of them say amen. Now, maybe you haven't got that word, or you don't have a word. Let me give you a word. Can I give somebody a word? Yeah. Here's one's for you. 2014 may have been survival, but 2015 is going to be your arrival. In 2014, you went through some stuff and barely survived. I barely got here. 2015, you are going to arrive, but you got to keep moving. Come on. You got to keep walking and get to the place of breakthrough. Somebody say amen. So today, I want to continue this road to Rehoboth as we get 
to the big thing that God has for us. I want you to write in here this first point. Here's what we have to understand. If we are going to get to the place, the big thing God has inside of us, the big thing God has for us this year, our time is now. God, now is the time to see what you're going to do in my life. Here's how you're going to do it. Number one, you must believe that Rehoboth is here. You must believe that Rehoboth is here. You got to believe that it's here. Now, what do I mean by it's here? I'm not saying like it's here physically here, but it's in your here. It's in your now. It's here already. It's not some distant thing like, oh, I don't know if I'll ever. No, it's here. You're on your way to Rehoboth. And you got to have this sense of searching like some of you ladies do when you know, I know there's a sale here. right? I know, I, I know there's a good deal here. You got to say, it's here. I, I, I can't see it, but I know it's here. And I'm going to get there because when you have a revelation that it is here, then nothing will keep you from getting there because you know it's here. And I'm going to receive it in Jesus' name. Now, Rehoboth, the big thing that we're believing God for, it's here. Let me say some practical things. The healing you're believing God for is already here. The peace of mind that you're saying, God, this year, I just want to win these mind battles, it's here. It, it, the, 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 the strength to break the addiction is here. The, the, the spouse that you're believing God for is here. Come on. Best place to meet people is in church. But you better be right because we're watching you. Come on, somebody. The good ones are in church. That's where I met my wife, in church. But she put me, she put me to the test. Come on, right? And so, just because, I, I got to be saved. Just because I go to church. Not, you can fool someone for three months. And you find out he's not a knight in shining armor. He's just a, a joker dressed in tin foil. But you can find some gems in church. Somebody say amen. And be nice to people. Come on, and I'll move on. Sorry, babe. My wife looks at me. Okay, I'll, I'll turn this into a singles message. Start how. The, the, the business idea that you're believing God for is here. It's going to be birth in the spiritual. It's here. The, the purpose that you're believing God for is here. The big thing, it's here. you got to begin to say, God, it's here. i just, I got to find it. It's here. I can't get caught up in the drama. Someone say Rehoboth is here. Tell your neighbor, the big thing is here. Tell him that. The big thing is here. Genesis 26, 22. I want to read this verse one more time. The Bible says, and he moved on from there, and he dug another well. For they did not quarrel over it, so he called its name Rehoboth, because he said, for now the Lord has made room for us, and we shall be fruitful or prosperous in the land. Here's what the Lord showed me. When Isaac found Rehoboth, listen to me, Rehoboth, the big thing, was always there. It had always been there. God didn't create Rehoboth. God, God looked to Isaac and said, Isaac, it's already there. Rehoboth was always there. It's just that Rehoboth needed an Isaac. <laughs> Someone, someone's going to get it. The healing is already there. God's just looking for the Isaac that's going to connect to it. The, the idea that's going to shift this generation, God's like, it's already there. I'm just looking for the Isaac in the room that's going to connect to what's already in the atmosphere. God isn't creating more healing. Healing is already here. God isn't creating, come on somebody, more peace of mind. It's already here. It just needs an Isaac. <laughs> Tell your neighbor, let's go Isaac. Come on, right? Now if your name is Isaac, you're really tripping out right now. <laughs> is this message for me? I don't know how much more specific it could be. <laughs> Rehoboth needed an Isaac. It wasn't the other way around. God's like, I already have what you need. God, listen, what you're believing God for, God's like, it's already there. It's just I'm trying to get an Isaac to connect to it. Someone say amen. See, see, see what we have to realize is the way we walk out our Christianity, and, and let me teach. I love to preach, but let me just teach a little. The way we walk out our Christianity is we walk out our Christianity not fighting for victory. We have already been given the victory. We already won. Tell your neighbor, say, we won. We already won, right? Where did we win? Boom, the cross. We won. He defeated our enemies completely and in totality. The devil has been defeated. The devil has been stomped on. The devil has been, come on, he, he got blown out. He's messed up. Someone say, I already won. And so I just, oh, the devil's winning. Because I was like, he, he, he's, he's done. 
God defeated the enemy. I want to read this to you, Colossians 2, 14 and 15. The Bible says he canceled the record of the charges against us, and he took it away, nailing it to what? The cross. He being Jesus. The Bible says all our records, all our records. Uh, you know, you see me think you got a public record? You got a record in heaven. And it was, a, anyhow. It, it, God's like, that record? He says, I nailed it to the cross. And he canceled it. He removed it. Verse 15. He didn't just do that. Watch this. In the same way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities, and he shamed them publicly by victory over them. Where? On the cross. So what does the Bible say? The Bible says God forgave us of our sins on the cross, and God gave us victory on the cross. In other words, God's like, I already won the battle for you to be able to get what I have created you to get. You don't no longer have to say, man, I'm fighting for victory. No, we fight from victory. And we need to start walking our Christian life on the journey saying, I am getting to the place or I'm getting to my big thing of Rehoboth because God already gave it to me, and I'm not going to let no death. I'm not going to let no, no mamacita. I'm not going to let, come on, no addiction. I'm not going to let no sin. I'm not going to let any drama, any Esau, any Sitna stop me from getting to the big thing, the Rehoboth that God has designed. Come on, somebody. Designed in my life because God gave it to me. This changes everything. This changes everything. Because when we start walking our Christianity from the place of victory, then we start, this is, this is called the believer's authority. I talk a lot about authority. One of the things that's over our house is breakthrough, and, and we talk about breakthrough, but you'll never get breakthrough until you get authority, until you realize the authority that's been given to you. Yeah. That, that, that you walk around with the authority that's been given to you by Jesus. It's not like, hey, I'm authority, respect. No, but we have an authority in Christ Jesus. I've been reading a lot of the book of Joshua lately. You know, as a church, I believe God has given us not just a building, but a territory. And that's why God has had us as a season, as a mobile church, because God is showing that he doesn't need to give us a building, but he can give us the territory. But don't get me wrong, the building's coming. Somebody say amen. But, but, but God has shown us, he's given us a territory. I love the story of Joshua, because the story of Joshua, God makes a promise to Joshua. He says, Joshua, I've already given it to you. He hasn't even fought a battle yet. And I want you to hear this, Joshua chapter 1, verse 3. The Bible, God, God says this to Joshua. He says, I promise you, Joshua, what I promised Moses. Tell your neighbor, say he's talking to you. Turn to somebody else, your second choice, saying he's talking to me, okay? He's talking to me. He says, I promise you what I promised Moses. Now, I want you to take, I want you to put yourself in the position of Joshua. Because this is the proof that it's, it's generational, that the promise of God, well, it was for Moses, not for me. God's, God's saying, Joshua, I'm making you the same promise I made Moses. And God says to you, I make you the same promise I made Moses, I made Abraham, I made Joshua. Every promise is for us. Somebody say amen. Okay, he's like, I made you the same promise. Watch what he says. Wherever you set foot, you will be on the land that I have what? Given you. I love this. Because only God can speak in future tense in the present. He's like, I've already given it to you. See, meaning before Joshua even fought the battle, before Joshua ever did, he's like, as soon as you step on that ground, God's like, I've already given it to you. It's yours. It, it, I've given this. I already won the victory. It's yours. When we start walking like this, follow me here. As believers, believers authority, it makes you start to walk around in life with this sense of possession and taking a hold of and seizing the things from God that you start stepping into certain rooms and you're like, no, God's already given me the victory over this. It's called confidence. Someone say confidence. Now, confidence is a suit you can't buy. Confidence is, is you know when someone has it and someone doesn't have it. Confidence is an arrogance where I'm the bomb. No, no, no. I trust my God, not my gift. Confidence is when somebody walks into an interview and they know, no, God's going to give me this. Yes, sir, I'm here for the interview. Okay. It's not, when you lack it, it's... Yes, sir, uh, you know, I mean, if you're hiring or if you want to, you know, somebody. You... I'm helping somebody. Confidence is when you step into a conversation. It's not, well, you know, it's, it's if you want. I mean, you don't have. But you start walking as a possessor of territory. No, God gave it to me. Again, it's not arrogance of like, it's my. I'm a queen. No, you act like a drama queen. Chill out, right? But confidence is, no, God, I'm going to step foot in this room, and you've given me this territory. You begin to pin your shoulders back, and you begin to understand 
who the God is you serve. You begin to walk to work and you say, I know I'm not the owner yet, but I know that my Rehoboth is coming and I'm going to begin to work like I'm an owner and God is going to bless me. And I started from the bottom, but God's going to take me from the top. I am not the tail. I'm the head. I'm above and not beneath. I'm a lender and not a borrower. I know God is going to take me, come on, from glory to glory. Somebody say amen. Now, in case you didn't know, that's in the Bible. Why, why would God tell the nation of Israel all of these promises? You're the head, not the tail. You're, the, you're above, not beneath. You're the lender, not the bar. Because Israel was so many years as a slave. But let me tell you something. God's trying to get you now to be a possessor of the blessing God has for you. It's saying, God, I know there's a Rehoboth in front of me, and I'm not going to let any Sitna or Esau stop me from the big thing you want to do in my marriage. I'm not going to let anything stop me from what you want to do in my generation. I am going to get to the place that you've already given me in Jesus' name. Now, somebody clap like you've received possession of those things. Amen. Now, the kingdom is like this. The kingdom of God is, is, is set up in a way, and, and I want to illustrate this so you understand, is set up in a way that God designed it for us that we're not just going to stumble upon certain big things, but that these big things that God wants to do in our lives must be dug out. In Matthew 13, 44, I want to read this verse to you. They're going to put it on the screen here. And the Bible says this. It says, this is Jesus explaining the kingdom to the disciples. Now, oftentimes, you'll read, if you, if you read, you should read the Bible, right? As you read the Bible, is you will find that Jesus says the kingdom of heaven is like, the kingdom of God is like. He uses all these illustrations because he's trying to explain how the kingdom of heaven works. Because see, most of us, we know how the streets work. We know how the system works. We know how this works and that works. But you need to know how the kingdom works so you can bring king, the kingdom of heaven into your earth and into your present reality. And so God is trying to explain to us how the kingdom functions. He says the kingdom of heaven is like, watch this illustration, like a treasure hit in a field. He says when a man found it, he hid it again, and then he in his joy went and he sold all that he had and bought that field. What God is saying is he says the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hit in a field. In other words, God hides things in a field so that people that really want to find it are going to find it. This is a principle that's true even in the physical. Where do you find gold? On Imperial Highway. No. You find gold in the deep gold mines. Where do you find a pearl? In the ocean. Inside of a clam. Where do you find a diamond? In my wife's hand. No. <laughs> deep in the rocks and the crevices. See, the precious things... Even in the physical, God has put him deeply hidden so that a person doesn't just stumble upon some of the most precious stuff, but it's for those that really are going to search it out. Look to your neighbor and say, there's a treasure deep inside of you. There's a treasure inside of you. Tell your neighbor, you're a treasure. Some of you, oh, it's hard for you to say that, but it's, come on somebody. But there's a treasure in there. There's a treasure in there. For some, it's harder to find than others, but there's a treasure in there, all right? <laughs> but there's a treasure. And God is saying, and it's deep in there. And God wants to bring that treasure out. God wants to bring what he has deposited in every single person out this year in 2015. God wants to dig out the Rehoboth that he's put inside of you, in front of you, around you. Come on, at your workplace, in your family, and God wants to bring it out. Somebody say Rehoboth. God wants to dig out this thing. Now, do you know where some of the most wealthiest places are on planet Earth? The wealthiest place on planet Earth is not Fort Knox where all the gold is that backs up our U.S. currency. The wealthiest place is not the old gold mines of San Francisco. The wealthiest place on planet Earth is not stock exchange in New York. The wealthiest place on planet Earth are not any of those things. The oil fields of the Middle East. The wealthiest places are graveyards. Because in the grave are literally books that have never been written. There are dreams that never came out. There are songs that have never been sung. Businesses that were never started. 
world changers that were never bold enough to break out the big thing. And it's buried. We have to ask ourselves, am I going to bring out this treasure in my life? Or am I just going to let it die? See, I, 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 if you haven't figured it out yet, we, Freedom House, we are not going to let the devil put a limit on your life. But we're going to believe for the limit to be taken off. And that the big thing that God has put in you is going to come out this year. And this room will be filled, come on, with big people. Uh, come on, somebody, doing big things for God and seeing big things happen in every aspect of their life. You better clap louder than that in Jesus' name. Come on, somebody. Amen. And tell your neighbor there's a big thing in you. Tell him, no, say like me, there's a big thing in you. See, most of us have never been told that. Most people, they look at you and say, I think you're all bad. <laughs> don't, get, don't get too excited. See, not everybody's going to, not everybody's going to, not everybody will celebrate the big thing in you. And can I tell you, that's when you know who your real friends are. That's when you know who your real friends are. It's called crabology. Can I break down your crabology? Crabology is when one crab tries to get out of the bucket and all the other crabs try to bring it back in the bucket. But sometimes there's a crab that gets out of the bucket. And he comes back and all the crabs are clapping. <laughs> the same people that were nagging you will be the same people that will be applauding you when, the, when you get to the place of Rehoboth in your life. Absolutely. See, most, most of us, we, 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 we're at our Esau moment. See, Isaac went to Esau first. And when he went to Esau, I think a lot of people got mad at him. Look at you. You said Rehoboth big things. Man, look where we're at. And let me tell you, if people leave you at your Sitna, then they were never meant to be with you at your Rehoboth. <laughs> Hello. I, God has designed Certain moments of your life, because people will abandon you, because they never saw the big thing in you. You want to know who saw the big thing in me? It's my wife. She took the biggest risk with me. Don't be fooled by the rocks that I got. I don't even got any, but don't be fooled anyway. I'm just Josiah from the block. People that see the big thing in you when it's not in you, those are the people that you need to be close to. And you need more of those people in your life. And you put yourself around those types of people. Show me your friends, I'll show you your future. But if you're, if, if, that's why you got to get in a room like this. People say, man, Pastor, you're so moving and inspiring. No, no, you don't understand. No, I'm not. I'm not moving and inspiring. No, the word of God, the Bible says, is sharper than any two-edged sword going beyond in moving your soul and into your spirit. And this is transformational. When you come into the house of God, it's not about, ooh, I felt good. It's about God transforming your heart. It's about God awakening your dreams. It's about God removing the lid and saying, there is a big thing inside of you, and I will not let you take it to the grave, but I'm going to bring it out of your life to be a blessing to this generation. I wish somebody gave God a big clap for the big thing that's inside of your life in Jesus' name. Now, I got to end. I'm going to end here, but I want you to see this video. I want you to see this video. So important. Okay, this is not a bathroom break, all right? Video. Let me go to the rest. Don't, you, you missed this video, you missed the whole message. Because in recent times, you know, they, they, they started doing all these reality shows and all that stuff, and some of it, let me just be honest, is not reality, okay? Reality TV is not reality. They're like, let's stage this, and then we'll film it, and we'll call it reality. That's not reality. Okay, the real housewives of OC, that's not a real housewife of OC. You want to see a real housewife of OC? Come over to my house. And my wife and the other kids, ah! That's a real housewife of OC. Anyhow, um, some of these shows are pretty cool. Like, I like the, the contestant shows, like, you know, American Idol, and some of these back in the day, how they come, and these, you see how they, they don't really believe they can do it, but then they step in and they do it, and they go, whoa! 
And you find out like some of them were, were, you know, a cash register somewhere and they had this big old gift in them and they didn't even realize it. You know, there's a show, The Voice, which is, I think is pretty cool how they don't even see the person. They just sing and then they go, wow, we didn't even know you can sing like that. I like that. Because see, the world and culture tries to say a certain person has to look a certain way and be a certain way in order to do a certain things. Don't listen to all that. The big thing is inside of you. Forget what's outside of you. God will use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. Someone say amen. But I love this video. I want you to see this. This is actually from America's Got Talent in Britain. And it's a gentleman by the name of Paul Potts. I recently saw this video, and I said, man, I've got to show it to the church. Because you'll see this young man come in with no confidence. You'll see this young man just say, I'm going to give it a go. But I want you to see the reaction, and then I'll wrap it up, and I'll let you go to watch the Super Bowl. Check out this video. Wow. You know, when you see that, you just can't help but think, he was selling car phones. And that big old gift was inside of his life. Massive gift was in his life. And you see him fill up concert halls that are massive. And to think, he could have let confidence and issues hold him back, what the world says, from the big thing. That's not okay. And see, many of you in this room, God's like, I put such a massive thing inside of you massive that this world will miss out on if you don't bring it out. Now, it's different for different people. Some of you don't try to sing. Okay, don't. <laughs> but some of you do need to. Some of you do need to. Some of you, it's a business idea. It's a big, God's like, I, I want to, for some of you, it's, it's, a, it's a starting a school, something. For some of you, it's to write a book. For some of you, God has put a big thing. You're, well, you know, uh, I don't know. But if it wasn't nothing, then why has it always been bugging you all these years? For some of you, it's to teach and preach the gospel. For some of you, it's to be a mission. For some of you, God, it's going to be different things. It's all going to bring glory to God, but it's going to be unique. And I'm sorry, but I'm not okay with that. I will not allow my life to not see the big thing come out of every single one of your lives. And I believe it's going to start this year, and it's going to begin to happen because our time is now. I said our time is now. I said our time is now. And I believe that inside of every single Clark Kent, there's a Superman. And you've been walking around thinking, I'm just Clark Kent. And God's like, no, you are Superman. You are Superwoman. And there's a supernatural gift of God I have put inside of your life. And I want to dig it out. We're going to go through some stuff. But I'm going to... I said, I'm going to, man, somebody better stand to their feet right now and begin to give God praise and say, this is my year. And say, my time is now. God has put a women's ministry in your, a nonprofit organization inside of you. He has put something, and you've held it down too long. But this will be the year where, God, I'm going to bring it out. 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 My Rehoboth. Come on, somebody. Give God praise. Come on, say it. Hey. hey there. Pastor Josiah Silva here. And I just want to thank you for taking the time to listen to this message. I really pray that it spoke to you and encouraged you to get further along in your walk with Christ. Hey, I'm so thankful for technology and the way we're able to stay connected through all sorts of media outlets. You know, if you're watching this online through your iPhone or your iPad or on a computer or some tablet, you know, it's amazing how we can just be able to bring to you the gospel and be able to spread this message of hope with you and encourage you. Hey, if this message again spoke to you, there are two things I want you to do. Number one is begin to seek God. Ask God, how does he want you to grow through this? How does he want you to respond and be able to go further in your walk with Christ? And the second thing is share this with somebody. Maybe you know somebody who can maybe use this encouragement or this message. You know, share, you being able to share that can speak to somebody you have no idea who may be seeking for answers and God can touch their heart. Hey, also, if you're listening to this and maybe uh, you don't find your, you'll find yourself not at the place you should be with Christ. Listen, God can give you a fresh start, a new beginning, and a new life in Him. I want you to say this prayer with me if you want to experience that new life and get close to God. Say this, say, Jesus, I confess you as Lord. Come into my heart and change my life. If you said that short prayer, hey, I believe that's going to set off something where you're going to be able to then begin get closer to God. 
hey, we'd love to meet you in person. I'm thankful for the media outlets that we have, but I'd love for you to come to one of our services, whether it be on a Sunday, we have three service times at 8.30, 10.30, and 12.30, as well as a midweek campus on Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. Love to meet you in person and have you come worship with us at one of our services. Hey, once again, thank you for, uh, for watching this, and if God leads you, we'd love to meet you here in person. God bless you, talk soon.